Auzubillahiminashaytanirajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim My name is Friha Mushtaq, student of BS Chemistry 8th semester morning. My topic of presentation is Magnetochemistry. The content that we are going to study today is History of Magnetism and Introduction to Magnetochemistry, Origin of Magnetism and the different terminologies in describing the magnetic properties and different units for example magnetic flux and magnetization history of magnetism the first known magnets were naturally occurring lodestones lodestones are basically iron ores commonly called as magnetite having formula fe3o4 a lodestone would always align itself in a longitudinal direction if it was allowed to rotate freely. Compasses 2000 years ago was first known use of the magnet by the Chinese. In 1263, Paris de Maricourt mapped the magnetic field of a lodestone. He also discovered that a magnet had two magnetic poles, north pole and south pole in the 1600s william gilbert the physician of queen elizabeth concluded that earth itself is a giant magnet and it has also two poles north pole and south pole in 1820 hans christian oster discovered an electric current flowing through a wire can cause a compass needle to deflect as the moving charges create a magnetic field around around itself that can deflect the compass needle placed in its path showing that magnetism and electricity are related to each other What is magnetochemistry? Magnetochemistry is the study of the magnetic properties of materials. By magnetic properties, we mean not only whether a material will make a good bar magnet, but whether it will be attracted or repelled by a magnet or magnetic field. Both these terms are under the magnetic properties. Magnetism arises from moving charges, such as electric current in a coil of wire produces a magnetic field around itself. Magnetic properties also arise from the spin and orbital angular momentum of the electron contained in a compound or a atom. In a material which does not have a current present, there are still magnetic interactions because the atoms that are making part that that it is making that material has electrons protons in it, its atoms which is itself making or creating a magnetic field around them atoms are made up of charged particles protons and electrons which are moving constantly and producing such kinds and such kind of magnetic interactions the process which create magnetic fields in an atom are nuclear spin. Some nuclei such as hydrogen atom have a net spin which creates a magnetic field. In the figure as shown in above, if a nucleus has an unpaired proton, it will have spin and it will have a net magnetic movement or field. Second one is electron spin. An electron has two intrinsic spin states similar to a top spinning which will curl up and down or alpha and beta spin as shown in the down given diagram we can see that if the electron is moving or spinning in anti-clockwise direction then it is shown by negative half and is called down movement or beta movement or beta spin or if the electron is spinning or moving in clockwise direction then it is represented by a positive half and is called up movement or up spin or alpha spin of that electron electron orbital motion there is a magnetic field due to electron moving around the nucleus we can see in the diagram that there is a nucleus present in the center and around which electron is moving in a circular or 
uh, in an orbital path around the nucleus and creating electron orbital motion it also creates magnetic field around it each of these magnetic fields interact with one another and with external magnetic fields however some of these interactions are strong and others are negligible measurements of interactions with nuclear spins are used to analyze compounds in nuclear magnetic resonance nmr and electron spin resonance spectroscopy let me explain that what is the main function of nmr and esr here NMR is basically used in organic chemistry to study the carbon hydrogen bonds and locate these bonds but in in organic chemistry such as in organometallics there is some portion of organic compounds as well so here NMR is used as well as in transition metal complexes where carbonyl compounds EDTA or ethylene glycol or such organic ligands are attached to inorganic compounds so here is the NMR works to detect the carbon hydrogen bonds or organic bonds present in inorganic chemistry as well in electron spin resonance spectroscopy it basically detects the number of unpaired electrons in a compound or in an atom that shows the magnetic properties of that compound moreover it tells about the hybridization and edge states of the atom or molecule interactions between the intrinsic spin of one electron and the intrinsic intrinsic spin of another electron are strongest elements such as the actinides this is called spin spin coupling for these elements this coupling can shift the electron orbital energy levels higher than the expected the interaction between the electrons electrons intrinsic spin and its orbital motion is called spin orbit coupling spin orbit coupling has a significant effect on the energy level of the orbitals in many inorganic compounds macroscopic effects such as attraction of a piece of iron to a bar magnet are primarily due to the number of unpaired electrons in the compound and their arrangement the various possible cases are called magnetic states of matter origin of magnetism what is the source of magnetism if an electric current which is flow of electron electric current is basically flow of electron is allowed to flow through a wire coiled around a core a field which behaves as if it were it were due to the magnet for example magnetic field is produced now we know that according to classical model of an atom bohr's model the electron has two types of motion first one is orbital motion and second one is spin motion orbital motion is due to the motion of electron around the nucleus in an orbit orbital motion can compare to the flow of electric current through a coiled wire the orbital motion therefore like an electric current flowing in a coiled wire also produces magnetic field or magnetic movement which is called orbital magnetic movement or simply orbital movement of electron second one is uh, this diagram which is showing the electron movement around the nucleus and creating magnetic movement due to electrons orbital motion around the nucleus second is spin motion spin motion which is due to the spinning of electron around its own axis around its own axis uh, uh, an electron um, rotates clockwise or anti clockwise this spin motion also produces magnetic field or magnetic movement which is called spin magnetic movement or simply spin of the electron these two magnetic movements for example orbital magnetic movement and spin magnetic movement make an atom behave like a small magnet it is these two magnetic movements which produce magnetic properties in substances now we know that when one magnet is placed in the field of an other magnet the magnetic field will produced by one magnet will interact with that produced by the other it may be 
interacted in a construct, uh, constructive way or destructive way. If uh, this interference is constructive, then it increases the magnetic properties of that substance. But if it is destructive, then it, uh, it decreases the magnetic properties of that substance. This, in other words, means that when a substance which behaves as a magnet due to orbital and spin motion of its electrons, as we have seen above, is placed between the particles of a magnet, the magnetic field produced by the orbital and spin motion of the electrons is the externally applied magnetic field. It is interesting to note that when the various substances are placed between the poles of a magnet in a magnetic field, they do not behave in a similar way. They show different behaviors which are not known as magnetic behaviors. These magnetic behaviors are classified as diamagnetism, paramagnetism, ferromagnetism, antiferromagnetism or ferrimagnetism. Last three like ferromagnetism, antiferromagnetism and ferrimagnetism, these are less common or rare occurrence. On the other hand, paramagnetism and diamagnetism are great of or are of great importance are very common. Terminology in describing the magnetic properties and different units. First of all, we describe the principles of magnetism and definition of some terms. First is magnetic flux. Magnetic flux, most often denoted as YM, is the number of magnetic field lines passing through a closed surface such as conducting coil. The SI unit of magnetic flux is the vapor WB in derived unit its volt, meter, volt second. A flux density of 1 vapor per meter square is 1 tesla. The vapor is named after, the, after a German physicist Wilhelm Edward Weber 1804-1891 The CGS unit is the Maxwell, the unit name James Clerk Maxwell who presented the unified theory of electromagnetism and was established by the International Electrotechnical Commission in 1930. 1 Maxwell is equal to 1 cos into centimeter square is equal to 10 to s power minus 8 in the magnetic field of strength 1 gauss, 1 maxwell is the total flux across the surface of 1 square centimeter perpendicular to the field. Magnetization Magnetization is the process of making substance temporarily or permanently magnetic, magnetic as by the insertion in the magnetic field. If we place any material in magnetic field, it, 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 there, uh, there, there is some interaction because the magnetic produ uh, field produced by the electron due to its spin motion and angular uh, orbital uh, motion, the, the, the both fields interact. So this is uh, the way that uh, how, we, uh, how we temporarily or permanently make a substance magnetic. All materials respond to an external magnetic field. The magnetization of a sample is proportional to magnetic field. The formula is given as below. Thank you so much for listening. Any queries, any questions regarding my presentation can be asked in the comment section that is warmly welcomed. Jazakallah.